Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode in this Zodiac series. This will probably be a longer video. I am trying to make these videos shorter, but we have a lot to get through, so here we are. So, as of 20th of January, we are now in the terrestrial days of Aquarius. But what's of even more significance is that we are in the sidereal year of Aquarius. A terrestrial year is what everyone knows about. It's the 365 days the Earth takes to orbit around the Sun. But the sidereal year is when our solar system travels around the zodiacal belt in our galaxy, traveling through each zodiac constellation. It takes approximately 25,968 terrestrial years for our solar system to orbit the galaxy. We're currently living in a very momentous time because we have recently exited the age of Pisces and have entered the age of Aquarius. This began precisely in 1962 on February 4th between 2 and 3 p.m. when a great astronomical alignment occurred and this could be witnessed during that time. The age of Aquarius will approximately last 2,140 years, hence why we are only at the beginning since it only began 60 years ago as of making this video in 2023. Now, I will be making a more in-depth video, a much deeper video on what the age of Aquarius really means for us as a species, uh, and where we are going, uh, what is to come, and what is the higher purpose of all of this. And we're already tasting all of this, right? With many wars happening, degeneration of all kinds, unknown diseases, catastrophes, etc. This will all get much worse, and we will study why, but for now, this video is more focused on comprehending the terrestrial influence of Aquarius during this time of January and February. But if you listen carefully, you'll also be able to link all this knowledge of Aquarius to the wider forces of what humanity is going through in this current era. So let's analyze all of this a little bit, and then we'll get into more of the Aquarian influences for the personality in the human being, especially when it comes to people who are born under this sign. But just remember, we all have to make extra efforts to comprehend and integrate Aquarian values, since it is this energy that we all have to learn to align into right now on a collective level. The previous age humanity was in was the age of Pisces. Now, since the age of Aquarius only just began, we are still in a transition period, and the last impulses of Pisces can still be felt. It's sort of uh, still hanging on for dear life. So there can be two forces that are currently felt in humanity today. The desperate one that is dying, outdated, clinging on to the old Piscean ways. And the other force is the dawn of Aquarius, which is ruthlessly revolutionary and which will be felt more and more as we continue into the coming years. Pisces was an age of dogmatism and atheistic materialism. The symbol for Pisces is two fish, which represents duality and the struggle between opposing ideologies, such as the conflict between spirituality and materialism, or things like science and religion. But you see, all of these conflicts are only kept as conflicts due to dogmatism and false beliefs, and just a lack of individual insight on these matters. What humanity has been missing for many centuries is direct experience and knowledge in the heart, and understanding synthesis between conflicts, to be able to comprehend paradox and all sides of truth in any given part of life. This is where the revolutionary energy of Aquarius comes in. The energy of Aquarius seeks to completely shatter old dogmatic blind ways of thinking and instead bring down higher knowledge to the world, open-minded knowledge. This is why since the 60s uh, there's been 
huge shifts in humanity's psychology. All of our systems uh, have been changed in radical ways, social systems, economic systems. Uh, we saw huge conflicts between the genders, men and women. We saw a huge revolution in the way people think about life uh, and in particular sex as well, uh, especially with the hippie movement that started all of that. So people, you know, realized that our previous concepts of sexuality was stale, regressive, and suppressive. That humanity in the Piscean era was previously enslaved by sexuality and suppressed it. It didn't like to talk about it and kept everything related with sex hidden. And this is because of the influence of the age of Pisces. But now, since the age of Aquarius began, everything is out in the open. But as we continue, higher knowledge will slowly become more and more understood, going even deeper into things, meaning esoteric knowledge, occult knowledge, understanding more of the uh, themes and topics that are explored on a lot of the videos on this channel. And more importantly, we won't just be learning about these things based from books and lectures and YouTube videos, but we will be pushed from our inner being to experience these things directly in the hearts of us as individuals. So you see, Aquarius is a symbol of the water bearer, literally pouring water, the new knowledge and ways of thinking onto humanity, revolutionizing the human soul to completely obliterate old intellectual dualistic conflicts and understand a more middle path, a middle way, a path of synthesis. Gnosis is called the doctrine of synthesis because it's only in Gnosis, direct experience, that we can contemplate paradoxes and contradictions without being identified with one side of the, or the other, not desperately seeking always for a conclusion, but actually working practically with life in order to try to mature into direct knowledge and wisdom of things in our life, in our experiences. But if we choose to just identify with just one mode or one way of thinking or some belief being stuck in some mere uh, intellectual predispositions, then the age of Aquarius is here to smash that to pieces, right? And you see it a lot in the uh, human collective today that when one person has a very strong opinion about a thing, there is going to be a plethora of other opinions opposing that opinion. So the ego very much likes to subscribe to beliefs, thinking that uh, this thing is right or that thing is wrong, or you are wrong and I am right, and it's really not about that. That's not the age for this, uh, of this childish sort of arguing. We need to leave that behind. All of this dualistic thinking of right and wrong black and white. And so if we easily subscribe to one side of things, we will suffer and feel the consequences of being so stuck in the intellect, theories, beliefs, and skepticisms. And so if we want to overcome all of this, then we have to admit with honesty and sincerity in our hearts about the way we think and the way we are, the way we act and why we act the way we do, and just who we really are as a person and what are our real motives. Is it just from pride, from fear? A lot of the time it is. A lot of the time we are stuck in the intellect, in dogmatic beliefs because of some kind of psychological conditioning, uh, that we are just very fearful people or that we just are very prideful people and that we uh, get a sense of psychological identity in these things and we just get stuck, right? So it is our time here now in this era to wake up from all of that. And that requires a sense of inner psychological revolution. This is why Aquarius is symbolized by paladins, 
great warriors or knights who fight for a cause. So while in the beginning of this age, we are currently making a lot of advances in uh, technology, science, medicine, etc. But this is all ultimately leading to a higher call from our being to revolutionize our consciousness as individuals. This is where it will lead eventually as this uh, era, this age of Aquarius uh, advances and intensifies. So if we look at the word Aquarius, the first part is aqua, which means water in Latin. And then we have Arius, which means air. So Aquarius as a sign is related to the basic elements of water and air. But air is its main element air being the thing that contains and carries the water as the water bearer. And this water is in its deepest aspect, the sexual, alchemical, transmutational knowledge of the mysteries of the ninth sphere, like taught in my recent videos. If you see my uh, videos uh, previous uh, to this one, the two videos before this one. And so it's this very higher knowledge, this sublime knowledge that is, you know, quite difficult to understand. It's this knowledge that is being poured into humanity's consciousness now. Uh, whether we know it or not, whether we are, you know, reading the right books or not, uh, this is something that is being worked on in our consciousness to uh, start to understand. You see, from the age of Pisces, we had uh, regressive, suppressed sexuality, right? And then it went from one scale to the other. But uh, the sexual mysteries, uh, as taught by Gnosis, is the, the middle way of understanding it, is to achieve that balance and not to be in extremes, right? Not to be an abstinent or a very lustful person, but to understand it uh, in synthesis, uh, in the key of really awakening to this blossoming of kundalini and our consciousness. So during this time, we're given a completely different type of knowledge for which this era is now ready for, as opposed to intellectual dogmatic knowledge. So this new Aquarian knowledge is not deposited into our intellect, like from books or universities or schools, but it is deposited into the sexual glands in the lower chakras in order to push us to revolutionize and transmute into new and higher ways and modes of being. There are many ways in which these new celestial intelligences are now reaching us, such as through the different planets, but it is mainly coming from the sun, Remember that everything we eat is made possible from the sun. Uh, everything we eat has solar atoms contained within it. And afterwards, everything we eat after we digest it is converted into blood. And then the last thing that is produced from food is sexual energy. So this is just one way we receive new solar forces to aid us on our path and uh, in order to change and transmute and mutate, right? To transmutate. So we'll see more of this as we uh, connect Aquarius to Leo in a little bit. Leo being connected to the heart and the sun and these solar rays, these new solar rays of the Aquarian era. So the meaning of the new age of Aquarius is to know, not to think like in previous generations, but to know, meaning it is so much deeper than mere intellectual knowledge. It permeates our emotions, our soul, our psychosexuality, and every cell and every part of our body. It is a true mutation or transmutation of the body and of humanity. The Greek symbol of Hebe also relates to this as well, and to Aquarius, as she represents the mystery of alchemy and transmutation, how water is transformed or matured into wine. Similarly, how our intellectual knowledge and the things that we study or the things that we want to explore should also mature through applied practical scientific spirituality into the wine of the spirit in order to nourish the consciousness, not the intellect. So the name Hebe means youth or vigor. Our youth or vigor and eternal life, our ability to remain as innocent children of God, depends on our element of water 
which is how Hebe is related to Aquarius, which is the water carrier. Hebe is the force of the divine feminine principle within us that sustains us, giving us the food and the nectar of higher wisdom to fuel us on our path in order to continue to arrive at the total purification of our psyche, of our consciousness, and therefore providing us with perfection and immortality in the superior dimensions, in the higher planes of existence uh, that we've studied in previous videos. But again, we need to repeat, this type of practical spirituality is not attained through reading books or watching YouTube videos. It is attained by practice, practice, practice. Every day, every moment, observing our consciousness and revolutionizing ourselves through union with our own being. So Aquarius is the bringer of knowledge. It brings new water, new substance from the air and delivers it to humanity to pour real knowledge into the air or space of the three minds and the five centers of the human being. Now, we tend to make the assumption that knowledge is related to the intellect, and it is true that intellectual knowledge is a form of understanding, but it is the lowest form of understanding. It is the most superficial form of understanding. The most shallow level of knowledge is intellectual knowledge. We cannot awaken consciousness with the intellect or beliefs. We can only do it by actively using our consciousness to awaken. And to awaken consciousness is something we do here and now. We can never think that we are awakened, we can only ever be awakened from moment to moment. So as we saw, Aquarius is mainly the element of air and is therefore very governed by the mind. It has a lot of intelligent intellectual energy. And as we know now, the intellect is the center of the human where the ego takes a very strong hold of. So when it comes to analyzing this Aquarian influence on us, and especially for those born under the sign, we should always ask ourselves, is our mind being used by our true inner master, our inner being, or is it being used by our unconsciousness, our ego? So the intellectual air energy of the mind is so powerful and prominent in Aquarius and Aquarians. And so Aquarians have to be uh, mindful of this and reflective that it can be one of the greatest strengths, but also one of its greatest defects and weaknesses, according to the person, of course. Now, Aquarius is also governed by Uranus. Uranus is tremendously explosive and revolutionary in nature. That is why this era is completely radical and has huge changes. So people born under this sign also hold this revolutionary energy, and combined with the element of air and intellect, uh, they are usually very good people at expressing themselves in well grounded ways to attack controversial opinions or traditional beliefs. This makes them especially effective in the world of politics and philosophy, and in people of a more developed Aquarian type, it gives them a great disposition for these esoteric studies, since they're able to think about concepts intuitively and practically without getting lost or struggling in the intellect too much. Uh, they also usually have a strong will and intuition, especially when they are motivated to make some kind of change, whether it's on a spiritual, personal, or collective level. They are the true revolutionaries of the Zodiac. Aquarius also rules social relationships and working with others, focusing on social problems and the ability to reflect on the direction of the world as a collective and feels passionate about changing it, being naturally identified with fellow humanity. Aquarians really care about people, other people in this sense, and in combination with this, they can be quite restless, always wanting to 
transform and feel some kind of progression in life or go on an adventure. They want to feel they are always going somewhere. So like a Sagittarius, they can be quite uh, nomadic in their nature too, liking to travel to a lot of places. Aquarians also generally don't care about past and traditions and history and will challenge them and want to renew and renovate them with their ability to think outside the box with new and original creative ideas. Now, in order to understand all of this more deeply, we have to look at the opposite sign and the opposite astrological influence or the polarity of Aquarius, sort of Aquarius's shadow. And if we look on the zodiac chart, it is Leo. Now, these two signs, although they are opposite, are quite similar in some ways and quite complementary to each other. Aquarius is a fixed sign like Leo, meaning they are strong-willed, and when they make a decision and say they will do something, then they will do it, and nothing is going to stop them doing that thing. This can also express itself in a negative side as stubbornness and pride, similar to Leo as well. So again, this is a very interesting dynamic because Aquarius, like all signs, need to learn from its opposite sign. Its deepest reflections on what it needs to learn and integrate and work on on its subconscious levels. And more significantly, on a personal and collective level of humanity, we are learning or receiving teachings on this subconscious level from the energy of Leo in this way of opposites. And in a way, the Leo part of the being is essentially saying to the Aquarian, I rule you because I represent your king, your heart, your deeper intuition, the highest wisdom. I represent your true soul. Now, Aquarius is quite rebellious and stubborn, and so a less embodied type of Aquarius can struggle to listen to useful advice because it just hates all type of authority, even rebelling against the authority of its inner divinity. And on the other hand, a more embodied type of Aquarian learns to recognize authentic and legitimate wisdom and learns to be flexible and actually listen to advice for once. So, Aquarians need to learn to channel their natural rebelliousness into becoming intelligent rebels, not just rebels for being the sake of a rebel, you know, just for the sake of it, or being prideful or fearful and just being someone who doesn't respect rules or perhaps even turns against uh, society. Uh, they need to learn to channel and ground all of that revolutionary electrical energy to first listening to advice, and then coming up with their own original creative solutions to problems. And Aquarians really learn fast too, since they possess this great element of air. It just needs to be grounded in some way with the other elements. This is why they say in some teachings children born under the influence of Aquarius are difficult to teach, and that nothing is ever achieved with them through harshness and punishment, but it is rather with gentleness and encouragement and developing an emotional connection with them uh, which will help. And I've observed this myself with uh, family around me. So if we remind ourselves more a bit about Leo, Leo focuses on the heart, on the individual, and has a strong sense of this individuality and charisma and leading people, leading the masses. One of the weaknesses of Leo is that they can struggle to work with others if they aren't in charge. Now, Aquarians, on the other hand, are generally the opposite. They tend to focus more on groups, really thriving and enjoying group work, working with others for the sake of the collective in the name of higher ideals or, you know, whatever they are enjoying. It's totally natural to see a person born under Aquarius to be part of some movement, or perhaps uh, they join a group protesting. Aquarians don't care for that much for leading or being center stage, but would rather see everyone working together in solidarity and unity. It's a very sociable and comfortable sign uh, and very comfortable with other people. So Aquarians usually have a lot of friends as well for this reason. Now, we're looking at this because the problem here is that they can try to keep their individuality within the group 
Or in other words, they can easily identify with a group of people. And identifying with a group's thoughts or ways of being, or it might not even be people they know, it might just be a particular things that they've subscribed to, perhaps like scientific or religious beliefs or whatever. Well, this can be a bit of a problem because it's not unlocking the full potential of that Aquarian energy if it's just subscribed to uh, conditioned psychology from the external world. So what we need is, and what Aquarians really need, is to learn to express their own individuality in order to bring higher knowledge to the group or groups uh, that they care so much about. You see, higher knowledge is never channeled through some group or collective consciousness. Great changes have always been made by great individuals who developed their own mind. This is how Aquarius can learn from Leo, and this is also what the Aquarian age as a collective needs to learn, to stop identifying with groups of people, political parties, books, spiritual groups, religious groups, scientific dogmas, following others blindly, and instead to develop true individuality, true individual consciousness that is not conditioned by external, terrestrial, material, social psychology. This means to realize the work on the ego, to know thyself and therefore blossom as a divine creative individual. That is the only way the great Aquarian era can be grounded properly and really revolutionize the planet. It will be revolutionized by people uh, and individuals who are really willing and ready to sacrifice themselves for humanity as an individual. So I think we can see this a lot around the world these days, with people who are protesting in large groups uh, just mindlessly, unfortunately not really achieving many changes, but usually just promoting more conflict. So the true symbol of the Aquarian warrior is to pour knowledge to help humanity in an intelligent way, through their great creative mind and intellect of the element of air, and be able to educate others and also be an example through their actions. Whether that means putting on a suit and, you know, infiltrating the government and fight for higher values, or whether they become an artist to inspire people with sublime things, or whether they write a book with higher knowledge, whatever way uh, people can be of more intelligent service in order to inspire and help humanity in more effective ways. So I really love this dynamic between Aquarius and Leo. Aquarius, the water giver to humanity, and Leo, the lion of the law, or fire, or justice of karma, acting, Leo acting as the way for Aquarius to get in touch with its deeper, more intimate emotions to measure what and how they should actually fulfill their mission and purpose in life. These two signs are a very powerful mix of a sort of divine justice of karma and the growth of an individual, and the air element mixing with the fire of the heart. Aquarius holds a huge amount of air for that fire to grow tremendously, because fire needs air, and together they are able to transmute the waters and refine into a very high level of consciousness in order to liberate humanity. This is why in this era, great and tremendous uh, information, spiritual knowledge, esoteric doctrines such as Gnosis are now being revealed to the public, and it will continue to intensify in the years ahead. So in a way, Leo in this dynamic between these two signs represents the divine individual who looks at Aquarius straight in the eyes and says, what are your motives? Who are you really? What would your heart look like on the scales of karma? How rotten or how pure is your soul? And that forces Aquarius to really reflect on these things. Aquarius uses that spirit of the heart to reflect on itself, instead of being too focused on the collective so much. So this is really interesting and something 
we'll see more in a later video on the Age of Aquarius. But simply put, Leo calls for the purification of the heart. And right now, this cosmic call to purify ourselves can be felt. And we can feel that humanity is currently in a very degenerated state and the lion of the law is ready to serve its punishments, its karma, which is why all of these, you know, catastrophes and wars and illnesses are all happening on the planet right now, which again, that will intensify. We should expect more of these things to come as this uh, old age of Piscean uh, degenerated ways of uh, thinking and being uh, needs to be absolutely demolished. But it will not come, it will not happen without some kind of struggle, right? Because when the ego feels like it's going to die, it uses any kind of uh, craziness, psychological possession in order to try and keep itself alive and will do anything to, you know, uh, keep itself alive. So the Aquarian energy, if we get in touch with it, allows us to intuitively sense this, this moral compass of the heart provided by Leo in a very practical way and helps us with the air element of the mind to discern from the heart what is right and what is wrong, not according to religious beliefs and moral uh, philosophies, but what is right and what is wrong, according to divine justice, cosmic law, in both our personal, individual lives and also as a species. Because again, we need to escape the intellect and being a mechanical person who just believes life should be this way, right? For example, if we feel like uh, that we should always be peaceful people uh, and never fight, and we believe that we should, you know, never kill anyone, but then maybe when it comes to a very difficult ordeal, a difficult uh, life situation where perhaps we are in a war or perhaps some murder is going to kill like, you know, many people, then what do we do? Are we just going to live from uh, intellectual, uh, moral, dogmatic beliefs? Or are we actually going to use our moral uh, inner compass of the heart and act on those things? So this is what it provides us with, to have an active sense of conscience rather than a dogmatic intellectual sense of conscience. So when we sense this Aquarian Leo relationship of energy and sense it very clearly, the Aquarian type of person, which can be anyone, says thank you to the Lion of the Law for its discernment and higher perception, and then goes to change themselves accordingly and also goes out into the world to fight and revolutionize and stand up for all those things which it learned from Leo as false and wicked and wrong, right? According to this uh, new way of uh, conscience and understanding and judging um, situ different situations in life uh, with intuition. So this is why Aquarius is so important, that strong sense of virtuous rebellion and sense of social unity and fighting for injustices in its superior aspect helps us to understand the energy of Christ or bodhicitta, to learn altruistic selfless love and a sense for rejoicing for people's happiness uh, when they achieve it through uh, things that we have given of, of being in service to other people. And like we've been seeing, we need to move away from intellectual constrictions of dogmatic beliefs. Aquarians also value freedom from all of this too, in both their personal life and also for the life of everyone else. They want everyone to essentially be flying in the element of air together. So they don't usually uh, criticize their friends a lot, and they allow people to be free and let them believe what they like, because a superior Aquarian knows that it doesn't ultimately matter so much what a person believes or thinks, but what matters is, or matters more, is a person's actions and who they actually are. So this is why Aquarians hold such a great disposition for understanding esoteric studies and practical knowledge. 
and practical gnosis because they understand that a superior ways of being is found in our actions and direct experience. So in more superior aspects of Aquarians, they are very philanthropic, uh, very generous, faithful in friendships and know how to select their friends by instinct. They know, they usually know people by intuition and they always uh, want a sense of genuineness from other people or brotherliness or a sense of sisterhood with who they consider their friends. Now, in some inferior aspects of Aquarians, they can be very distrustful and use all of this intelligence to just dedicate it to things of the material, physical world and just selfish goals. Through this, they can have uh, a fear of intimacy because they feel like a relationship or marriage makes them feel weak or trapped and opposes their value of personal freedom. But they just need to realize that having more intimate relationships helps them to connect more to the Leo energy that they can learn from. And they need to realize that always going against people, fighting them, opposing them, can lead to feelings of isolation and loneliness. But also in its superior aspect, this can be channeled as independence and developing that uh, individual nature that we've been looking at. But it can be a fine and difficult line to follow when they're first developing themselves. And as for an intimate relationship or life partner, Aquarians just need to find someone with same or similar values, someone who respects their sense of freedom, uh, gives them personal space to be. And so, yes, as we've seen, Aquarius is the sign of friendship. So I would say that the most important thing uh, when it comes to looking for a relationship uh, is that their partner will be first and foremost their friend and someone that they can trust. So ultimately, Aquarians, a lot of them will find in their life path that uh, they will find a lot of fulfillment in helping others and being of service to other people. But in order to connect with others, to truly help them, they must first learn to connect to themselves and face themselves within. They may be an air sign, but they have to remember that they are the water bearer. So it's better that they don't fear their own emotions and instead embrace them, as that will bring also a lot of fulfillment and a natural way in order to really find their life path and their life purpose. And again, this applies to all of humanity right now, since we are in this era. And so to know ourselves, we have to realize the psychological work on the ego. And this is where we get to the practical aspect of Aquarius. If we want to know thyself, we have to learn what it means to self-observe ourselves from moment to moment, to live in a state of presence in the being from moment to moment, or even better said, in the one moment of life, never actually being uh, pulled in every direction from identifications of the world, but just learning to be here and now. Now, often Aquarian energy is focused on politics or world affairs, but the best thing it can direct its attention to is inward, to the self. It's useful to uh, comprehend something we've seen in a lot of uh, videos on this channel, that the pluralized I, the legion of ego that we have within, works in each of the five centers of the human machine. And further, in these Gnostic studies, we see that each of the five centers has 49 subconscious regions, and in each of those regions lives thousands of eyes, thousands of egos that we need to discover and comprehend through in-depth meditation. Why does it have 49 layers? Well, remember that in Awakening Kundalini, it is said that we have to raise Kundalini seven times. That means we need to awaken and create all seven bodies of the being, the physical, etheric, astral, mental, causal, and atmic bodies. So seven times seven equals 49 layers. And recall from the video on the uh, real meaning of sexual alchemy, we studied that the tree of life that we need to awaken 
maps out these seven bodies very well. But what is more important for us to understand is first the existence of the Kunda buffer, the inverted Kundalini, which consists of our lower regions or hell realms. It is there in our subconsciousness, unconsciousness, and infraconsciousness where these layers exist and where the work of knowing ourselves is truly done. This is why dream work, this is why astral projection is so significant because every time uh, we go to sleep, we enter these subconscious realms and we are given the opportunity to work with our subconscious self in a very uh, intimate and vivid way. We can do it all the time in waking life here and now, but this is also the superior aspect of astral projection, to be able to do this in a very deep way. So when we self-discover ourselves, when we become conscious of the activities of our subconscious egos in the five senses of the machine and in the 49 subconscious regions, then we awaken our consciousness. That's the only way we truly begin to awaken. So it's impossible to have real wisdom of our inner being without first having known ourselves. So if we really want true, legitimate ascension, we first have to descend. This is a mistake that many beginners on the path make, that I have made for many years, that many people want to first ascend without first having descended and discovering the self in an intimate way. So this is significant to the social sign of Aquarius because it is really in our relations and interactions with other people which is when our defects, our egos, our psychological eyes and negative reactions spontaneously appear. And if we live in an alert manner in our life, living with self-observation from moment to moment, then we can discover what center uh, specific eyes, specific desires or egos came from. And then by means of meditation, like the method taught in my video on how to dissolve ego, we will discover them even more in depth in each and every one of the 49 subconscious regions. And after having comprehended them, then we can continue to proceed to the spiritual death, to die psychologically, and not to experience death of ego because we desire a result, because we want to become enlightened or better, or to become a saint or master or something, but simply to die for the sake of dying, because we understand the necessity of ego death, and to sacrifice ourselves to realize a new way of being in order to help humanity. This all takes immense practice in order to prepare the physical body to get used to this new energy, this cosmic energy that we want to ground, and get used to the various phenomena that it will discover as it awakens, such as uh, astral projection and creating these new bodies and other types of uh, self-realization. Now, it's a very deep topic in itself, but uh, it's very good for Aquarius because as we have seen, Aquarian energy is all about it needs to learn to know itself more deeply. That's how it can really uh, flourish in helping others. So I'm going to link uh, my recent Instagram post about an experience, an astral experience I had relating to all of this uh, in this dissension process. Some people asked me to expand on this a little bit here, so uh, I hope it makes sense. Now, as we've seen in previous episodes in this Zodiac series, each Zodiac points to and governs different parts of the body, meaning that also different planets magnetically govern different parts of the body too. And actually, that's how the awakening process is on the advanced path. It is about different parts of the body being activated, or different parts of our DNA. And so we have to begin to perceive the human temple, the human body, as one whole intelligence, rather than the scientific dogmatic view that uh, our intelligence or consciousness just resides in the brain. As someone who, you know, is deep into these studies, you know, that's such a ridiculous thing to believe, as I'm sure many of you uh, agree with. So the activation of Christic energy in the body is achieved in parts, area by area, 
and also body by body of these seven bodies we saw. And what's important to reflect on in each of these bodies is that each one has its own cerebrospinal nervous system, its own medulla, its own kundalini. That is why the Buddha said, listen to me properly, for in each human Buddha, there are seven Buddhas. Now, a lot of people ask throughout my series on the chakras about other chakras in the body, since there are hundreds of them, not just the main seven. And actually, in this astrology series, that's exactly what we're looking at, just in a more astrological synthesis type of way. Now, when it comes to Aquarius, Uranus rules over the calves of the legs and the ankles. Now reflect on the fact that all the chakras in the legs and the feet are similar, if not more, sexually significant or more fundamental than the sexual organs themselves. Now Aquarius also has large influence over these nervous systems too. And we can reflect a bit on the fact that the path to awakening requires a lot of courage, and it is the weakness of cowardice and fear which are the main obstacles to progressing on the spiritual path. This relates to the legs and the calves in an energetic way. For example, think about when someone is feeling a lot of fear, or maybe you've been in a situation yourself where you've had tremendous nervousness and your legs or calves or knees started shaking. This is caused by the emotion of fear and cowardice or some kind of imbalance in the calves and legs. In a way, we could sort of measure all of our spiritual progress as individuals by if we could place all of humanity in front of the great light of all of the gods, uh, we can see how many people would tremble in fear and see their legs shaking. And those who have integrated God within themselves enough can probably stand quite strong without too much chaotic nervousness compared to those who aren't even able to stand up and just, you know, they just drop to their knees. So, I say all this to try and convey the significance of the calves, because it probably sounds ridiculous to a lot of people who are not accustomed to these esoteric studies, but to those who are, you know, everything is for a reason and everything has its place. So in the Gnostic teachings, it's taught that energetically, this is where the terrestrial forces from below meet with the celestial forces from above combining together in the calves to give us life and energy, to sustain us. And that is where these forces or emanations proceed to give us deeper feelings and emotions and hunches and uh, how the our being really pushes us to seek new ways of thinking and uh, new, you know, spiritualities and you know, this is, I believe this is where we, you know, the reason why we start to experience a lot of synchronicity in life, because uh, when we start to listen to our deeper, more primal celestial forces, the purified ones, which, you know, I'm not just talking about uh, lustful things, but I'm talking about pure sexuality, spiritual sexuality, when we start to integrate and move towards that, you know, it is a type of magic. When we start to move and, and listen to divinity and our own intuition in this way. So there is a sort of magnetism here in the calves that gives us this higher intuition that, you know, makes us move, right? This is the legs. It's telling us uh, what to do and where to go and how to be. So these emanations that are coming from below and from also above are of a primal sexual nature that meet in this part of the body of the calves. So from a more human perspective, these are perceived as quite erotic forces, something very deep and primal. This is why the calves awakens a lot of masculine attention, that in general, men are quite attracted to this part of the body of calves and ankles in women. So it's curious also to see that uh, Portuguese people and Brazilians call the calves ventre das pernas, which means womb of the legs. And that's how it's understood in these teachings, that the calves are a sort of energetic magnetic womb which 
energies rise from the earth and pass through the soles of the feet and uh, reach the calves and in their ascension they meet with the energies which descend from above from the sky or heavens of Uranus. The energies that ascend and those which descend meet and magnetize the calves in an intense manner. This is why in the example earlier we would tremble in front of the gods if we cannot handle the amount of energy that is possible to descend from the spiritual heavens, the uh, higher superior dimensions in nature, if we struggle to uh, ground all of that from above and we aren't grounded enough in our physical body with enough incarnated solar energies, then uh, you know we can start to tremble and have too much nervousness and uh, not really be in touch with ourselves. Now, I know this can be quite all difficult to understand. I'm trying uh, in vain to really convey the importance of this because I think that a lot of us are still really stuck in our heads and we are just not really attached to our bodies. Um, I've met a lot of people who say that they just cannot feel energy within their body and they cannot feel life or anything within their so-called inner body, any energy within themselves. So I would say that um, a good book, uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, uh, is, is quite good for this because he teaches this in a more basic, beginner's, uh, simple way by describing that, look, uh, pay attention to the body every day. It's a very simple practice, really. You don't even need to read the book to do this, but it's a practice and you can do this as a meditation. You just have to be able to concentrate for uh, at least, you know, a few minutes and just place awareness in the body, in the inner body, uh, and you can start to feel energy, right? If I place uh, attention in my hand, I can start to feel what my hand feels like. If I place attention in my uh, calves and in my legs, I can begin to feel energy there, okay? So yes, I know all of this can be a lot to try and comprehend. I'll leave links in the description as always. But yes, so the magical practice for this sign is very simple. And it is really actually a preparation for the practice that will be given for the sign of Pisces, which rules the feet. This practice is to mentally and energetically prepare ourselves to open the passageway for the currents that will begin next month in Pisces. So here's the practice. And of course, it's going to help you uh, start to comprehend what we've been looking at in this video in a practical way. Of course, if you uh, commit to practicing this and it is very, very simple I think it is the most uh, simplest uh, practice in this uh, zodiacal series. So what we do is every night before sleep, with two hands, it doesn't matter which hand is uh, touching whatever leg. With two hands, start from your ankles, massaging the bottom of your calves, going upwards to the top of your calves, with the purpose and intention of powerfully magnetizing the calves, meaning really feeling divine energy within the calves of your legs and getting in touch with them energetically in the inner body with the yearning of charging oneself with powerful forces of the constellation of Aquarius. These magnetic passes should be combined with the following occult prayer as you massage. Energy pass through, energy pass through, penetrate my organism, current that comes from below, ascend and fuse with your sister, the current which comes from above, from heaven, from Urania. Now you can pray that as fast or forcefully or gently as you like, whatever works for you. You can repeat it as many times as you like, just as long as you are really energetically magnetizing the legs with your energy, okay? So then, after you do that, after you do this, this combined uh, massage and prayer, then afterwards, 
enter into meditation. Now you can meditate sitting up for a bit and then lie in your bed, or you can lie in your bed straight away, depending on uh, whatever your spiritual practice is. But in any case, after the prayer and the massage, enter into meditation while lying down and be prayerful towards your innermost being, or just pray. Asking it, asking your inner being, your inner master, your higher self, to bring you to the sidereal temple of Aquarius. Relax, concentrate, and bring up sufficient drowsiness to allow your internal sight to show you the entrance into the cosmic temple where you may experience whatever you must, hopefully some form of illumination. Obviously, what I'm saying here is that the physical body will go to sleep while your consciousness will travel in the astral body. Now, just do as described. Do not worry at all if you lose consciousness and don't have an experience. Uh, what's important is the daily massage throughout these days of Aquarius and the magnetization of the calves and doing the prayer. At some points, you will probably have some kind of experience, whether it's uh, during your dreams, uh, during the morning, or just at any point. I can really say that in my experience in these years of uh, practicing astral projection, and anyone who has had the experience of the joy of being in the astral body, it is like feeling you are in a sort of magnetized body, uh, a very energetic body. And for many of you, you, you'll be able to feel, especially when you fly in the astral, when you actually fly in the air, in the astral, you really feel the whole astral body as though you feel the whole weight of it, but it has no weight. And you just feel the whole energy. And really, doing these practices that we see in this uh, zodiacal series of magnetizing the legs and the, you know the thighs, the knees, the calves, um, and the the ankles and the feet. Of course, for for this Aquarius uh, time, we are just doing the calves. Uh, but for this, all of this, you'll see that it really does get you in touch in a very grounded way and, and also, of course, helps with many other aspects of life, that it really does uh, help to balance and ground the nervous system in your whole energy field. So yes, that's the practice, okay? I hope that helps. Thank you, everyone, and questions are always welcomed below.